highlights for the past year, I will just go through now. Firstly, we ceased our involvement in a major activity for two other kids, as you know. But we formed a new partnership with community organisations to assist homeless youth. We started a new forum with a business focus for younger members. We've made important changes to the club's bylaws and we've initiated a new web-based administration system which is truly a milestone for this club. The year commenced with the club's withdrawal from the Flotilla for Kids. It's not a decision taken lightly, as the event had raised almost half a million dollars over six years for camp quality. It's also supported a PhD scholarship for research into paediatric cancer. The reasons were straightforward. The event was very demanding in their resources and it was perceived that it was run its course in terms of public support. The running of the Flotilla for Kids event involved considerable effort by a large number of people from this club and also from other organisations outside. It was a very hands-on and demanding task and we should be grateful for the efforts of those people over the six years of the event. The freeing up of resources provided an opportunity to consider a new project. John Govan suggested we consider the homeless youth issue based on his own experience uh, working in child psychiatry. An investigation by a small working group led by Chris Mitchell Moore, prison director, found that youth homelessness was a large and hidden problem. It was being addressed collaboratively by a group of community organisations in the city. The group was keen to work with the club, and so we formed a partnership with them. And we officially launched the partnership in April, initiating two projects to support their work. The first involved funding to support unaccompanied male miners from Afghanistan to set up their accommodation in the new city west apartments as part of their integration into the community. The second will be a research project to undertake a longitudinal study into the interventions by organisations to support young people to evaluate what works, what can be improved, and as use that as a basis to guide policy and best practice. The club will fund this PhD study with the support of Australian and Rotary Health, and the scholarship will be called in September. Our major fundraising efforts for the year have been successful, and we've distributed $263,000 to various charities and community organisations. The two chief, largest fundraising projects are the Trailblazer Challenge and what we call the Magic Show. The Trailblazer event, which we operate in partnership with Operation Flinders, is important not only for the funds that are raised, it is great for club fellowship as it demands the hands-on involvement of a very large number of club members. This is also true of other fundraising projects. Fellowship and service are the principal aims of Rotary. In my mind, fellowship is the first. The trial blazer challenge this year involved more than 1,000 walkers and runners and raised almost $164,000, with two-thirds going to Operation Flinders and the balance distributed to by the club charitable organisations. Our thanks go to Steve Larkins and his team for their efforts in planning and executing this event. The World Festival of Magic, our magic show, has been running now for 20 years. I think it began with uh, past president uh, Peter Thwaites, if I'm correct. Um, the event is managed very ably by David Montrum with assistance of club members on the day. And this year we raised 57,300, great result. We thank David and his volunteers uh, for that work. The other fundraising activities are the Bulls and Bears Ball, which you've heard about earlier, the Wood Sales, and this Adelaide Sunday Mail um, Foundation Blanket Appeal. <coughs> the Bulls and Bears Ball, a joint venture with Financial Planning Australia, was held for the first time in June 2011, raising almost $30,000. It's been a held again this year on Saturday evening with increased attendance, so we're looking for good results. The success of this event is a great result for Rob Falcon and his team from the club and the Financial Planning Australia, and we thank them for their efforts. The Wood Sales was managed by Philip White, 
assisted by club, Bible club volunteers who uh, strained their backs, legs, arms, and bodies generally laid in fire from the Royal Adelaide Show of Woodchopping events on the 17th of September last. And their efforts raised almost $4,000. So thanks to uh, Philip White and, and, and volunteers. The Blanket Appeal is a joint project of Bank SA and the Adelaide Sunday Mail Foundation. In 2011, $8,300 was raised through the club's website to the overall target of $60,000. Approximately 2,000 blankets are distributed to the needy through this appeal. Uh, thanks to Ron Lush for managing this club's event here. The club distributed these funds to a very wide range of community organisations in addition to those already mentioned. These include Navita Children's Services, World Youth International, Sight for All, the Heart Foundation, the Arthritis Foundation, Phoenix Society, Time for Kids, Bedford Industries, Future Two Foundation, and a large number of other organisations, including international ones. Requests for support are all carefully evaluated by a number of club committees, and they do this work really well. We thank them for the work that they do. Helping young people has always been a strong focus for the club. In addition to the organisations already mentioned, the Rugby Club of Adelaide continues to support an interact club at Adelaide High School, a Rotary Club at the University of Adelaide. We also support the Rotary Youth Program of Enrichment, it's called RIPEN, the Rotary Youth Leadership Awards, it's called um, acronym RIDA, and more recently RIDA, which uh, the Rotary's great for acronyms, Rotary Young Driver Awareness, which is a wonderful program, and uh, we do that in conjunction with the uh, Rotary Club of Adelaide South. <coughs> Youth Exchange Committee worked with the Rotary Club of Adelaide South to support two incoming students, Anna Galchek from Parliament and Jennifer Holmberg from Wisconsin, USA. Anya was hosted by Keith Wilson and Cherie Terrell, Karen Young and James Hale. They're both from both uh, their parents, both parents from Rotary Club of Adelaide. And then Bev Clark and Robert Gunn of Adelaide South. Jennifer Holmberg was hosted by John and Louise Clements of Rotary Club of Monson uh, Lakes, uh, Beth Clark and Robert Gunn from the Rotary Club of uh, Adelaide South, uh, and Peter and Cheryl Viner were also from the uh, Rotary Club of Adelaide South. The councillors doing the year were Joe Tibby and Stuart Ellis. And our thanks go to the host families and the councillors who have given their support and care to Andrew and Jennifer. And it has returned uh, some time ago, and Jennifer, I think, returns in, in, within a week. In addition, the club continues to manage the South Australian Science and Engineering Challenge, uh, in spite of the difficulty caused by the withdrawal of Commonwealth funding. Some 72 schools in, involving 2,200 students take part in this event. It's a credit to Ollie Clark and his team, John Angu and Brian Brooks and others. Uh, who together with the support of three universities, the state government and industry, uh, we've been able to maintain the continuity of this after some, after some doubt earlier in the year about funding. And I think it's underway at the moment. The, the club's weekly bulletin is one of the principal means for communicating with members. From 2008 until November 2011, the bulletin was produced by Francis White of the Phoenix Society. Frances' role changed during 2011, making it impossible for her to continue. And we sincerely thank Francis and the Phoenix Society for the wonderful job and extra effort given to producing our laws. And we are very fortunate that Arthritis SA have been prepared to take on the bulletin's production. And today we, we welcome already Julie Black and Bernadette Pope from Arthritis SA and thank them for continuing the high standard of the bulletin, which we enjoy every week. I've mentioned earlier that fellowship is a principal aim of Rotary. In this club, we have many opportunities for fellowship. With our weekly meetings, suburban groups, the monthly fellowship meetings, and the hands-on projects we undertake. The weekly meeting is aimed, is aimed at being our best hour of the week for members with an excellent guest speaker. The past year has maintained this tradition with an outstanding range of speakers 
on a wide range of topics. We are fortunate to be so well informed about business, sport, culture, science, rotary developments, and so many other issues. The Speaker's Program Committee, chaired by Stephen Haynes, has continued to produce an outstanding speaker schedule. We should be very grateful for that. SACA continued to provide us with an excellent lunch each week in this wonderful dining room. Now, thanks to them for their support and the time's flexibility in terms of managing the numbers that come for lunch from week to week. The suburban groups are a great institution in this club. There has been some rationalisation this year with the Glen Osmond group being expanded and its members reassigned to another group of their choice. And this seems to be working well. The monthly fellowship meetings under Elliot Clark and his team have maintained an interesting program based on speakers drawn from club members on diverse topics. These meetings are convivial and relaxing and have been well attended uh, throughout the year. There has been concern in the club for some time about the need for a, a new forum focused on business. A business breakfast was held in 2010-11 with reasonable success, but it became difficult to continue on this path. <coughs> and this year, the club has initiated a new business networking approach, which has been named the Booster Club. A strange name, you might say, but this is the first name of the group formed by Paul Harris in the early stages of Rotary's formation. We have high hopes this group will prosper and become an attractive forum for time for younger members actively in business. The district conference with a focus on sustainability was held in Renlark in October. It was well attended by 30 members and partners. Uh, it was followed by an interclub visit to the Rotary Club of Cameltown, which happened in November, attended by 33 members and partners. And in May this year, 63 members and partners visited Panola, where a presentation of $2,000 was made to the Panola Hospital, Missouri. These visits were arranged by past President Warren Wilson with the assistance of Jenny Brown. And I thank Warren and Jenny for their tremendous efforts in making these a success. It's great to see you here, Warren. I can see you earlier. Welcome. Great to see you. Maintaining membership. Oh, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Um, the club was saddened this year by the passing of honorary member and past president Ron Hooper, past president Colin Brightson, and Lindsay Thompson. We acknowledge the work of these past members in their careers and in their service to Rotary and the community. And I also acknowledge the passing of two spouses and members during the year as well. Maintaining membership in these times is an ongoing task just to stand still. Members resign for many reasons, including work pressures or job relocation, or just to move on with their lives. During the year, 30 members have joined the club, 40 have left, leaving a net loss of one a total membership at the end of the year of 191, including eight honorary members. So the challenge continues. Significant amendments were made to the club's bylaws relating to the membership recruiting process during the year. The amended bylaws will provide a more simplified web-based process for electing members, more suited to today's needs. And now that will overcome many of the frustrations successive presidents have had with the recruitment of new members to the club. Revisions were also made to the bylaws affecting concessional fees to clarify the availability of concessions on the basis of financial hardship. These amendments were approved by members in May 2012. I acknowledge the work of John Hendrickson, membership director, Richard Johnson, and vice president Carol Proctor for researching the issues and drafting Bible amendments. A milestone was achieved this year with the introduction of a new web-based administration system which significantly reduces the time required to maintain our records, provides for efficient communication across the public committees and the board, and enables members to self-manage their personal records. This milestone is quite an achievement for this club. However, the full potential of the system is yet to be released, but to be realised. We all have to embrace this system, learn how to use it better than we do at the moment, and uh, make it work for the, for the uh, efficiency of our club. Our thanks go to, to, to Director Simon Drew and Adriano Sistanino for their work in developing the system over two years. The success of this club is the result of the efforts of many members. 
They recognise some or acknowledge the work of the club's committees and their chairs who undertake the administration, review and allocate funds to community organisations, organise support to young people, young and old, plan and execute fundraising initiatives. And all this, works, all this work keeps the club running and reflects the pride and commitment of members to its success. Without these efforts, the club would achieve very little. I have greatly appreciated the support of the board and the members of this year. We have dealt with some difficult issues and broken new ground in some areas. I would like to thank my executive, Vice President, Presidents Carol Proctor and Juliana Reck, Secretary Rob Bowker, Treasurer Sylvia Footner, President-elect Chris Mitchellmore, and Directors Simon Drew, Richard Johnson, Robert Pohl, Craig Hall, Frank O'Neill, Di Wilkins, and immediate past president Tony Robbins for their support and wisdom throughout the year. Finally, I recognise the support and tolerance of my wife, Jan, during the year you and Rotary tend to dominate our life's agenda. This is a wonderful Rotary Club with great traditions and regular service. The past year has been a rewarding experience for me, and I thank the club for the honour of serving as your president. I know that the incoming president, Chris Mitchell-Moore, is well prepared and will be a great president. And I wish him and the incoming board all the best for the year ahead. Thank you. Thank you.